Miss D. What, did you, you all enjoy that word? Amen. That was a powerful word from God. I thank God for um, our brother Tony for inviting us out on tonight and the pastor. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Amen. I am Prophetess Pastor Shahi with the Altar Worship Center where me and my husband are the senior pastors of Apostle Unity Shahi. Wave your hand, honey. If you're not a hater, put your hands together for my husband. Amen. I went through too much hell to get that man of God. Come on now. Amen. Amen. God is so good so wonderful they put me on a time frame okay they said 20 minutes okay I can talk longer than 20 minutes hey, amen I'm from the country I'm from Jasper Texas so you know country folks come on now somebody amen my husband told me to keep my shoes on so that is just against the rules in the country all right we was raised up with no shoes on okay amen amen well you can have take a seat take a seat take a seat take a seat amen amen um I thank God for the word that you brought because you truly introduced my message for tonight. Amen. The message is titled, It Was Absolutely Necessary. Amen. It was absolutely necessary. Amen. If you would go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 3, verses 16. Amen. I hope they're not counting this against my time. Amen. Because by the time I get to page 3, brother, just let me make it to page 3. Amen. 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 That is Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. How many have real Bibles in the house? Amen. 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 Hallelujah for the real Bibles. Come on. Put your hands together if you got a real Bible. Amen. 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 I have to go back to the Bibles because that that those other electronics, they be going dead on you and all kinds of stuff, embarrassing you all in front of folks. Folks know you don't know the word of God then. Amen. Amen. But Genesis chapter 3, verses 16, it says, To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will deliver forth children. In pain you will deliver forth children. Yet your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Somebody say he will rule over you. Lord have mercy. Thank God for the New Testament. Amen. Amen. The woman has the microphone so I got you ladies. Amen. It's ladies night you all can be seated. Amen. Well God gave me this message. It was absolutely necessary. Can I just get a little length? Amen. I don't want to tell nothing in the house of God. It was absolutely necessary. Um, this week, I've been sick all week long, okay? All week long. It's just like, Lord Jesus, come on, just lit up on me, okay? Well, I've been going through so much warfare after warfare after warfare this week. On today, I mean, just two hours before service, all hell broke loose in my life. Amen. And I said, God, what is really going on? And God just gave me the sermon back to me. It is absolutely necessary. Amen. When you have purpose on your life, you have to go through some things. Amen. Because it's absolutely necessary for what we have to go. Amen. So this is a love conference. Amen. And God so loved the world that he gave, gave his only begotten son. Amen. So God God gave up something because he loved us and he gave it up to die. Yes. Yes. Come on, come on. Yes. The pain is absolutely necessary. Who would have thought that pain was attached to love? Come on, somebody say, there's a thin line between love. Yes. Come on, we all watched the movie. Come on, we all been married. And some of us may have not been. But we all have dated somebody that we shouldn't have dated before. And we've been through some things that we ought not, maybe had not, should have been through. But it was absolutely necessary to get us to this place in God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because sometimes when your back is against the wall and you lose everything around you and everybody turn their back on you, that's when you find out that this pain is absolutely necessary. Amen. Most women desire to give birth to a child, some children, somebody said I want to have 10 children. So some, some children, and at one point in our lives, it, uh, we, we desire to just connect with the man's seed, amen? Somebody said with his seed. It's a natural desire of a woman to want to carry her husband's baby, okay? And some of us, it don't have to be a husband. We just want to be impregnated with a child, all right? We want to be a seed carrier. Somebody say a seed carrier. 
The Bible said our desire will be for our husband. So we tend to want to reproduce the seed because it is known that the man's heart is in his seed. All right. Because the Bible says that where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Okay. The country is coming out of me. Okay. Forgive me. Uh, where your heart is, there your treasure will also be. So in other words, a real man, not a boy, a real man heart is with his treasure. His seed. Because the treasure is a seed. Amen. Okay, okay. We're gonna have a little school just for a second. Don't don't time me yet, okay? Let me make it to page three. So my spiritual daughters always ask me, how do you know if a man is in love with you? We all had a question. Anybody have that question? How do you know if a man is truly in love with you? If you have to ask that question in nine times out of ten, he's not. Because the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Okay? So like Beyonce said, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Because what Beyonce was saying, in other words, that if you love me, you will invest in me. All right? Because you invest in what you love. All right? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart Okay, come on now. We about to have a little Bible study before we get radical and crazy, okay? Amen. So a man heart is in the seed, okay, brother? A man heart is in the seed. Boys do not connect to their seed, okay? They don't connect to their seed. So that's why boys plant seeds and leave his seed. All right, now, so that's why we have to meet the boy in divorce court. We have to meet the boy in child support court. We have to track the boy down because a boy is not connected to his seed, okay? All right, come on, we talking good, we talking good, we talking good, all right? I know this is a Baptist church, but we got to loosen up a little bit, all right now? So that's why God did not want a man to put his seed in the ground because God was trying to teach a man how to make wise investments, okay? So God is saying, don't just plant your seed where it cannot grow because a man's seed can only grow on the inside of a woman. A man's seed cannot grow in the ground. That's why we don't plant livestock during the offering time because the bill collectors only accept cash, credit, and check. All right? So you only invest what you expect to reap. That's why the Bible says that we reap what we sow okay amen so so we have to be careful with what we allowing to be planted on the inside of us okay so uh i'm um, doing the fall of man god established something okay what he established was that we would have pain during childbirth okay so that means that pain will be attached to your seed okay so even as Young girls, we still have a desire to be wives and mothers, and that's why we enjoy playing mama and daddy while the boy is playing with his race cars, okay? All right, we already building families. So in, in the same verse that God gives us a desire, he also gives us pain, okay? We building up to it's absolutely necessary. So, so the seed has the ability to change your season. So when a seed is planted on the inside of a woman, when you wake up in the morning and you're feeling dizzy and you're feeling nauseated and this thing been carrying on for weeks on and weeks on and weeks out, not Nine times out of ten, you are pregnant, all right? So that is pain that's associated with the seed, okay? So in the same text as God giving us a desire for our husband, a desire to want to carry his seed, he also give us pain. Come on. Mm -hmm. Teach it. it is absolutely necessary. So the pain of carrying a child in our womb is necessary for the journey. Of becoming a mother but although we all know that the joy of giving birth to a child supersedes the pain that's why a lot of us get pregnant over and over and over again and we lay on that table and we declare that I'm not having no more children I'm not going through this pain anymore but we do it all over again okay so first Peter chapter 4 verses 12 through 16 says 
Beloved, do not think it strange concerning fiery trials, which is to try you as though something strange has happened to you, okay? So we know that we have laid down with the boy or maybe the man, some of us, and we wake up pregnant, but we think it's strange for some reason, okay? And Peter tells us, think it not strange, okay? Think it not strange that you are attached to this pain. You are attached to this seed that carries pain, okay? So the word surprise simply means unaware or unexpected, okay? So Peter, remember, says, think it not strange. Strange. So Peter is saying, don't be surprised, baby, about the, about, uh, about the pain that's attached to what's supposed to bring you joy, okay? So the only way that we become unaware of pain is either because we don't know that it's coming, okay? Some of us, yes, oops, we did not know what's going to happen. So we did not know that it was coming or we are not educated about the pain that's attached to the seed, okay? So uh, 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 so you may be surprised because no one has told you about this or no one has told you that the very thing that is beautiful and the very thing that you're supposed to be excited about is about to bring you some pain, okay? So a lot of us, we go car shopping and we go pick out the nicest car and it's income tax season and we go run down there and give them people our money, our down payment and no, we cannot keep up with the car payment. So three months later, the bill collector is calling us asking for the payment and nobody told us when we signed up for the payment that there was going to be a struggle that's attached to the sea. Come on, somebody. So Peter tells us, beloved, you are about to go through some hell in your life. But thinking not strange, okay? So we are talking to women on tonight. So so don't start calling your friend and telling your friend, girl, I can't believe that I'm going through all this hell and all this high water. I am tired of going through the same old thing day in and day out. I am sick and tired of my boss. It looked like she can't stand me as soon as I put my feet through the door. Soon as I clock in, it looked like I clock in a drama. Come on, somebody. Nobody told me that pain was attached to the promotion. Nobody told me that pain was attached to the I do. I figured in my mind that since the dress was pretty, the ring was big. Come on, honey. And, and, and I had the nicest cars and the biggest houses that I wasn't going to go through anything. Come on, somebody. Nobody told me that the man was going to cheat on me. Nobody told me that the man was going to hit me upside my head. Nobody told me that the man owed back child support. Come on, somebody. Nobody told me that the man couldn't make children. Nobody told me that pain was attached to the blessing. Come on now, let's be real. The Bible says, let's go back to the Bible. The Bible says that God created both good and evil. So God did the thing, okay? God said, okay, that we will have pain doing childbirthing, okay? Who said it? God did. Okay, so we can't blame it on the rain, okay? God did it and God said it. God sent his son to go through pain so that we may be saved, okay? So because we have put it in our mind that once we get saved, everything going to be all good. And because we put it in our mind, girl, because I got my new car, I'm going to be able to do what I have to do and go where I need to go. Nobody told us that they were going to lay us off the job the very next week. Nobody told us that we was going to have to go through a struggle for the very thing that God had blessed us with. So Peter tells us, be loved, love, be loved, think it not strange. Peter said, don't be surprised by this because it is written, okay? It is already written. So Peter is saying, stop whining and complaining like you did not know this was about to happen to you, okay? So I know that this is a women's conference and we're supposed to feel good and nobody's supposed to tell us that we was going to go through anything. But the truth be told, it is absolutely necessary. That's it. It is 
absolutely necessary that we go through what we go through. Uh, 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 when you're trying to fulfill your destiny, when you're trying to get to your purpose, when you have only the first priority in your mind and that's to get there, you don't care about the hell that you have to go through to get to what you have to get to. Moses had an issue because Moses was focused on the pain when he's supposed to be focused on the promised land. Come on, somebody. So God raised up Joshua, and Joshua was a warrior. What Joshua said is, I don't care about the hell that I have to go through. I will go through what I have to go to through to get to what God has for me. All right now, so God tells Joshua, everything that your feet trample over, this is the Bible, this is not me. God tells Joshua, everything that your feet trample over, you will possess, okay? In the very same chapter, Joshua found himself fighting for the promise that was upon his life. Have you ever felt like, God, you told me to do it. God, you said the blessing belonged to me. God, you told me to go and marry him. God, you told and the very thing that God blessed you with, you find yourself struggling and wrestling with the pain of this thing. Come on, somebody. The very thing that you was promised with, you find yourself swinging and fighting. You find yourself trying to stand up and you feel like I can't keep my balance. When a pregnant woman finds herself pregnant, as the baby begins to grow, we talking about the blessing is growing. We talking about her territory being enlarged. As God begins to enlarge her territory she find herself wobbling to stay stable come on somebody because there is pain in her back there is pain in her pelvic area so her comfort zone is to begin to wobble so we begin to try to wobble our way out of things because we're looking for a comfort zone okay I'm looking for a comfortable position to get myself stable so I Although it's my blessing. So the thing that I desire, come on, somebody said that's a thin line between love and hate. We find ourselves at six months pregnant saying, God, if you could just take it right now, I believe it can live. Come on. We find ourselves at eight months pregnant saying, God, if you can take it right now, God, I believe it can live. How many being pregnant in here? We find ourselves saying, God, if you can take it, I believe this thing is going to live because I'm tired. Go through this thing. That's why 
why the divorce court is fuller than the church. Because the church didn't tell us that we was going to have to go through this. Nobody told us that we was going to be up all night long crying. Nobody told us that we was going to lose sleep behind this thing. Nobody told us that we was going to be depressed and oppressed. Nobody told us that we was going to be running for our life. Nobody told us that we was going to go through this thing. But Peter said, the Bible said, think it not strange that you go through this. So when you realize that it is God, when you realize that if God will bring me to it, then God will bring me through it. When you realize that I don't have to struggle always, I will go through this thing so I don't have to keep going in circles and circles and circles. See, Moses went through circles too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joshua went through circles, but he went for seven days. Because Joshua said, the circle that I'm going to go through, something is going to break. The circle that I'm going to go through, something has got to fall. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we realize that suffering is only for a while, I only have to go through it for a little while longer, Misty. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It comes in the morning. So God said it's coming. So one thing that I have learned through my pain as I close is that your pain will prophesy your next level in God. Your pain will prophesy your territory. Come on now, somebody. I may be wobbling right now, but I won't wobble always. Come on, somebody. I may be wearing wigs right now, but I won't be wearing them always. I may be polishing my own nails right now, but I won't have to polish them always. Come on, somebody. We have to realize that it's only for a while, just for a while, just for a moment. Somebody say, I only have to cry for a while. I only have to struggle for a while, just for a little while longer. Because God is about to bless those who can endure to the end. Those who can hold on, I can hold on. Tell nobody what I'm going through. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to call nobody because I got God's direct number. Yeah. They can disconnect my cell phone, but I can still call on Jesus. Yeah. So just hold on and just know whatever you're going through is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.